Hello, scientists, and welcome to day four. I hope you filled out your chart yesterday. If you'd like to check and see how you did, I've included a link that shows all of the answers. Now let's dig into today. Today's lesson is all about food chains and food webs and basically how energy moves through our system. Keep in mind, any food web will always begin with the sun. Everything on planet Earth gets its energy from the sun. That energy travels through plants that we will talk about later, and then it also moves from the plants to the animals and then back again eventually. And then there are consumers and they eat other things like this deer or this cow. They're herbivores, so they eat just plants. If you can zoom in on your screen there, you'll see that all these teeth are flat here. That's for grinding food. We also have animals that only eat other consumers or only eat other animals, like this carnivore. This is a fox, and you can see this fox's teeth are nice and sharp. That's for tearing apart flesh to chew that meat and to get its energy that way. And then you have omnivores. You may be like, but wait, I eat plants and I eat animals. Well, that's like this raccoon, which is why his teeth back here are nice and flat. But if his teeth hadn't fallen out up here, you'd see that they are nice and sharp. So he eats plants and animals. So that is an herbivore, a carnivore, and an omnivore. So let's put some of the things we've learned together and create a simple food chain. Now, as Mrs. Clark already said, all food chains and webs, no matter what habitat you're in, are always going to start with the sun. Our star is our source of energy. So everyone is going to start with the main source of energy, the sun. Now that sun's energy is going to get transferred. And there's only one type of thing on our earth, living thing, that can take the sun's energy and turn it to food. Do you remember what that was? It was plants. Plants use photosynthesis. So the sun's energy is going to be transferred into a type of producer. That's what we call plants. I'm going to do some grass. So this grass is a producer. It's a type of plant. Along is going to come something that's going to eat it, a consumer. And we're going to say that the energy is going to get transferred to this grasshopper. Now I'm going to try to use my growth mindset as I try to draw a grasshopper because I don't feel like it's one of my strong skills. Kind of looks like a roach, but you can imagine a grasshopper. The grasshopper's energy is going to get transferred to something that's going to eat it, like a frog. I have some students that I know could do a better job than me drawing this, and they're probably giggling at me at home right now. And that frog might get eaten by a snake. We've got lots of examples of our main energy, our producer, and some consumers. Ms. Clark, do you want to talk about the producers and consumers in this? I would love to. Producers and consumers. So we know that all producers get their energy from the sun, plants only. They use the sun's energy to produce their own food. That's why they're referred to as producers. Plants are producers. Animals are consumers. They might eat other producers, like the skulls that we talked about earlier, or they might eat other consumers. So they're gonna eat plants and animals. The great thing about a food web is that eventually when that snake dies away, he goes back into the soil, he decomposes, and that decomposed soil is now a great resource for that producer over there. So that's why it's referred to as the cycle of life or a food web. Everything is interconnected using producers and consumers for plants and animals to get their food. Wow, it's a circle of life just like on Lion King. <laughs> well, what about you? Aren't you in a food chain? Aren't you in a food web? That's today's do-it-yourself activity. Think about what meal you've eaten today or what meal you might eat. Where did all that food come from originally? Figure it out, draw it out, make a food chain where you're there at the top and think about the producers and consumers that you've already had today. Good luck and enjoy.
Bye, scientists. Bye, scientists. Don't forget about the links below to help you to continue to study more about food chains and food webs.